ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम टू टूडेज लाइव रीडिंग फ्रॉम रामायण द स्टोरी ऑफ लॉर्ड राम कंपाइल बाय भक्त विकास स्वामी वी आर एट द मोमेंट रीडिंग द सुंदर कांड एंड हनुमान जी हैज मेट सीता mother and uh, he has uh, exchanged the ring for uh, some past times mata has told hanuman so that uh, hanuman can prove to lord ram that he has met sita then he goes back and now just to have a little bit of a uh, fun and frolic around lanka hanuman ji is just uh, messing about with the ashok grove the uprooting the trees and everything else there and the uh, ravan has been sending different uh, people to tackle hanuman ravan then sent five of his leading generals along with the army saying i want you to capture this hanuman for he would could not be a mere monkey he must be a super powerful being then after the rakshas army assailed hanuman from all sides the general named durdhara released five arrows that pierced hanuman in the forehead this merely infuriated hanuman who swelled immensely in size then leaping into the sky he fell upon durdhara's chariot like lightning striking a mountain from the impact of hanuman's gigantic body the chariot was smashed into pieces and durdhara and the horses were crushed to death and raged at the destruction of their comrade two other generals named virupaksha and yupaksha suddenly sprang into the air and struck hanuman's chest with their clubs undaunted hanuman swooped down to the ground uprooted a tall tree and struck the two generals dead the two remaining generals praghas and bhaskarna then came before hanuman and pierced him with a spear and dart causing his body to become covered with blood the enraged hanuman then quickly tore off a mountain peak with all its animals and trees and pounded the two rakshasas into mere pulp with the five generals out of the way hanuman effortlessly destroyed the rest of the army hanuman killed the horses by wielding other dead horses and crushed elephants with other elephants he struck dead the soldiers with other slain warriors and smashed chariots by wielding other broken chariots after covering the ground with so many mutilated dead bodies hanuman once more stationed himself in the archway upon hearing of this massacre ravan simply glanced at his son akshar who was seated closely by desirous of battle the prince understanding his father's indication eagerly leapt from his seat in the assembly he then mounted his mystical chariot which could uh, travel through the air and was drawn by eight horses as he approached the ashoka grove akshar began showering all his arrows on hanuman as he came to close quarters a fierce duel ensued which made the earth begin to shake rather quake the sun become dim and the wind ceased to blow when aksh managed to pierce hanuman's head with three arrows hanuman began to expand his body while the rakshas warrior continued to shower arrows on him the young aksh was childishly proud of his strength and came fearless fiercely fearlessly before hanuman like an elephant approaching a well covered by grass after being struck by aksh's arrows hanuman assumed an awesome feature and sprang into the air Aksha closely followed him while constantly releasing his arrows however hanuman successfully dodged them while coursing through the air when an arrow suddenly pierced his chest hanuman mentally praised the skill of his enemy thinking although a young boy this rakshas is fighting very heroically and i really do not wish to kill him however as the battle progresses his prowess only increases if i do not kill him i may become defeated therefore it behooves me to kill him immediately just as spreading fire would should be extinguished at once 
Increasing his speed, Hanuman killed all of Akshay's horses with a slap of his hand, causing the disabled chariot to fall to the ground. Smashed to pieces, Akshay took up his bow and sword, jumped from the ruined chariot and ascended into the sky like a rishi on his way to heaven. Agile Hanuman, however, caught Aksha by the legs, then spinning him around thousands of times, he dashed the son of Ravan violently to the ground. With all his limbs broken and his chest crushed, Aksha gave up his life while vomiting blood. However, witnessed, having witnessed Hanuman's victory, the Rishi stationed in the sky gazed upon him with wonder while Ravan's heart filled with terror. As Hanuman again stationed himself at the archway waiting for the next onslaught of Rakshasas, the infuriated Ravan checked his anger and summoned Indrajit, his eldest son. Ravan said to him in warfare, you are unparalleled and equal only to me. You have conquered the king of heaven along with all the demigods and have received weapons from the Lord Brahma himself. Now go and do whatever is necessary to subdue this mysterious enemy. Hanuman felt great joy when he heard the twang of Indrajit's bow as the Rakshas came before him riding his chariot. As Indrajit showered his arrows, Hanuman rode loudly and expanded himself, then rose up to the sky to avoid the onslaught. In the fighting that ensued, Indrajit could not find any opportunity to pierce Hanuman with his arrows, nor could Hanuman strike Indrajit. Upon seeing the futility of his weapons, Indrajit considered Hanuman incapable of being killed. He began to think of how to capture him instead. Then Indrajit employed a special Brahmastra that immediately bound up Hanuman, making him fall to the ground practically bereft of consciousness. Hanuman could understand that he was being bound up by the power of Lord Brahma in the form of a weapon. At the same time, he could remember receiving a benediction from Lord Brahma that such a weapon would lose its effectiveness after a short while. Therefore, Hanuman thought, I cannot free myself just now, just but still I have nothing to fear. Rather than considering this a sad setback, I should take it as a good opportunity to see Ravan firsthand. Even though I have been taken captive, I am certain that from the benediction of Lord Brahma, I will soon free myself. Some of the Rakshas warriors then came and tied Hanuman with strong ropes as they bound him. They abused him with harsh words. However, as soon as Hanuman was tied up by the ropes, the effects of the Brahmastra became nullified because that weapon's power could not be used in conjunction with another means of bondage. In this case, the soldiers attempts to tie Hanuman with ropes. However, Hanuman allowed himself to be tied up by the Rakshasas, pretending to feel pain so he could get a chance to see Ravan. Indrajit could understand that Hanuman was feigning bondage being freed from the effects of Brahmastra. Thus he thought the capture of Naman has been rendered useless by these thoughtless Rakshasas. Moreover, now that the Brahmastra has been nullified, it cannot be evoked again against the same adversary. While Indrajit pondered over this predicament, the Rakshasas dragged Hanuman into the presence of Ravan while excitedly saying among themselves, who is this monkey-like creature? We should kill him at once, eat him up, let's roast him. Hanuman was face to face with Ravan. Ravan ordered his ministers to interrogate Hanuman. In reply to their questions, Hanuman said, I am a messenger from Sugriv, the king of the monkeys, who sends you his best wishes. The noble-minded Sugriv hopes that you are conducting yourself according to the principles of religion and that your kingdom is therefore prospering. Inwardly, Hanuman was enraged at being captured and thought of how Ravan had kidnapped Sita, further inflamed his anger. However, as he gazed upon the king of the Rakshasas seated upon his crystal throne, Hanuman thought with Ravan's charm, presence of mind, courage, splendor, and auspicious bodily symptoms, he would have surpassed even Indra in glory had he not become averse to righteousness. Likewise, Ravan was enraged yet felt apprehensive looking at Hanuman. Ravan wondered, is this Nandi, the bull carrier of Lord Shiva, who previously cursed me when I mocked at him, or is this Ban, the king of Asuras disguised as a monkey? Prahastha 
The foremost of Ravan's minister then assured Hanuman, If you simply tell us the reason why you have come here, we will let you go free. Hanuman replied, As a curious monkey, I have simply come here with the desire of meeting Ravan. I knew that an insignificant person like me would have a difficult time gaining the king's audience. Therefore, I destroyed the pleasure garden with the hope that I would be captured and brought into the royal assembly. I didn't intend to harm anyone, but when the Rakshas warriors attacked me, I was forced to kill them in self-defense. Long ago, I received a benediction from Lord Brahma. I could not be bound by any weapon or ropes. Thus, you should know that I have purposefully allowed myself to be captured. The power of Indrajit Brahmastra has already been nullified. Now please listen as I disclose the real reason for my coming here. My name is Hanuman and I have been sent as an envoy of Lord Ram, the son of Maharaj Dashrath. For a long time I have been searching for Ram's abducted wife Sita and it was my good fortune to find her here. O king of the Rakshasas, please know for certain that no one is immune to the arrows of Ram and Lakshman, not even the self-born Brahma, Lord Shiva or Indra, dare face to face dare to face Rama on the battlefield. O Ravan, you are the knower of religious principles. One who is actually wise would never court disaster by giving up the path of virtue. Please take my advice and give Sita back to Ram before it is too late. Previously, you gained immunity from death at the hands of the demigods and demons by virtue of your severe austerities. Likewise, you should now realize that your unrighteous act of abducting Sita will bring about disaster for you. Even I could annihilate all of Lanka, what to speak of Ram, who can dissolve and recreate the entire cosmic manifestation. So indirectly, Ravan has been told by Hanuman that Ra Bhagwan Ram is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hanuman's speech simply made Ravan more furious as his reddish eyes rolled in anger. He screamed, kill this monkey at once. However, in a gentle voice, Vibhishan advised, my dear elder brother, it is not proper to put messengers to death. You are certainly a great scholar. However, all your knowledge will be void if you become swayed by uncontrolled anger. Ravan, however... Did not appreciate the unwanted advice. He angrily replied, There is no sin incurred for killing an evil doer. Let Hanuman die. Vibhishan then argued in the scriptures, There is no injunction that a, that a messenger can be killed. Indeed, it is unheard of. The only punishments that can be determined, administered are mutilation of the limbs, flogging, shaving of the head and branding. My dear Ravan, great heroes like yourself never fall prey to the influence of uncontrolled anger. I suggest that you try to kill the enemy who sent Hanuman and not Hanuman himself. Why don't you send your army to fight with Rama and Lakshman? For it is they who seek revenge. By the influence of the pious, his pious brother, Ravan immediately relented, saying, Monkeys always prize their talks high, highly. Therefore, set fire to his tail and parade Hanuman through the streets of Lanka. And the people can see what kind of hero he is. Afterwards, he can be released to return to his relatives with a burnt tail and, a, and suffer great humiliation. Being so commanded, the Rakshasas then wrapped cotton rags around Hanuman's tail and soaked the cloth in oil. As the rags were set ablaze, Hanuman expanded himself in, the fit of, in a fit of rage and began beating the Rakshasas by lashing his tail about. The Rakshasas, however, took hold of Hanuman and tied him more tightly. Indeed, Hanuman allowed his this for he wanted to take a tour of Lanka to better inspect its fortifications. The Rakshasas rudely dragged Hanuman through the city streets, announcing to the people that they had captured a spy. As all the women and children, others came curiously to see the prisoner. The Rakshasis guards informed Sita of Hanuman's plight. Hearing this, Sita became greatly distressed and meditated upon Agni, praying, If I have earned any pious credit by my devotion and austerities, then let me be utilized so that the fire feels cool to Hanuman. Just then, the sacrificial fire maintained by Sita began to burn, burn mildly. Thereafter, the fire on Hanuman's tail burned coolly as 
Mayu blew ice winds. Hanuman wondered, why am I not being burnt, although the flames are blazing brightly? Indeed, it feels as if the Rakshasas have wrapped ice around my tail. Surely this is due to the mercy of either Ram or Sita. Then Hanuman considered it is not befitting a great warrior and servant of the Lord Ram to be bound up and made a laughing stock by these Rakshasas. I have had enough of this humiliation in the twinkling of an eye. Hanuman slipped away from his bonds by suddenly shrinking in size, then jumping into the air with a shout. Hanuman instantly assumed his gigantic form and applied and picked up an iron bar lying in the city gates. In a moment, Hanuman killed the guards and considers what else I can do to torment Ravan and Rakshas before returning to Rama. Since my tail is ablaze, why not use the use it to engulf the Lanka in a great conf conflagration? His mind made up. Hanuman jumped into the roof of the Prime Minister's palace, setting it afire. Then jumping from rooftop to rooftop, he ignited a great deal that spread over Lanka, avoiding Kuli and sorry, avoiding only the palace of the pious Vibhishan. Hanuman also went within many palaces, including Ravans, because of the raging wind. The fire soon blazed out of control, causing the proper stories of palaces to crumble causing the upper stories of the palaces to crumble and crash to the ground. The intense heat melted the gold and silver, which then mixed with pearls and the jewels and was flown into the streets like lava. A great uproar was then heard among the Akshasas as they tried to give harm themselves, save themselves and their possessions. Anguished cries and loud wails reached a Pitiful climax as multitudes of rakshasas, horses, and elephants were burnt, igniting the fat from the burnt bodies. The fire began blazing higher and higher, so much so that it appeared that the time of universal destruction had come. In a state of panic, the inhabitants of Lanka exclaimed, Is this Agni himself ravaging our city in the form of a monkey, or is it Indra or Brahma, time personified, or the limited energy of the Lord? We will continue rest of our reading from here onwards and hopefully we'll be concluding this Sundarkant in the next reading. Thank you for joining. Hare Krishna.